Hello, my loves. Welcome back to a new delicious, juicy episode of the podcast. Oh, okay. Today's topic, today's discussion, it's not even a topic. I just need to talk to you guys about the lessons I have learned moving through this eclipse season because they have been monumental. Lately, moving through this portal, you know, I was prepared for the energy in the sense of working with astrology, you know, what we do inside the membership, what we do inside of this channel, what we do inside of my TikTok. You know, if you're not following me there, make sure that you are because you're going to get all your energy updates there. But I was prepared energetically knowing that this was a big portal of rebirth with that solar energy we had on the solar eclipse in Aries, and then the death process that was going to happen moving into the eclipse in Scorpio. Now, let me note that this eclipse in Scorpio is right on my Pluto. Okay. It's happening in about an hour and a bit here in the Eastern time zone. As I'm recording this, I'm going to actually go into meditation through that portal lately, what I've been doing this year is each time we have a major shift, I've actually been taking time during the particular moments of the shift and going into meditation with the frequencies of the energy. So whether it's Pluto or, you know, it's going to be the moon today. So I'm going to use a moon frequency meditation. And I've actually been using those guided meditations to understand what the energies are bringing to me. So through all of this, I knew this was a death and rebirth process. I knew this season, this portal was about new beginnings and about solid, firm endings. Now, even in knowing that there's always surprises, okay? There's always surprises that happen during eclipse season. They're very intense. The time shifts are life-changing and the portal that opens and closes is very pivotal and finite. Okay. Now those closing moments, those closing energies feel like, like it's done for good. And it usually is just done for good. So the lessons that have been coming through have been plentiful. All right. So starting with the energy of living in alignment with your cosmic rhythms. Okay. This is what has been really coming through for me as I've been working with, you know, my personal transits and helping lots of you guys, my clients, my students through your personal transits inside of it's karmic. We've been studying, you know, the fluctuations of energies and how transits can literally guide you through the shit of it, through the intensity. And when we live in greater alignment and acceptance with the transits we are moving through and understanding them as gifts instead of detriments, even when they're painful and messy, things shift within us, okay? Life shifts and we begin to live in a greater alignment or greater ease or peace because we're just naturally tapped into well, this is how it's going to go. You can change your frequency, your energy, how you show up, but the lessons that need to come through are going to come through. So working through with like through your transits and knowing the cosmic themes that are going to come up has been, you know, my deep work lately is watching these pivotal shifts, knowing that I'm not going to know what's going to happen, right? I'm going to have no idea. Unexpected things are going to happen, but I know the energetic themes that will happen. So for instance, rebirth, new beginnings, death, letting go, endings. And I'll give you guys a good example of this. So earlier this week, as I'm recording this on Monday, I had a business alignment session with my dear soul sister and friend, Renata, and we were able to tap into my specific frequency through human design and astrology. And we went into my transits as well. And what we found... (laughs) within this was so pivotal for how I'm going to move forward. Now, understanding that in human design, I am a manifester. I'm a six, two. I don't have a lot of defined centers. I actually only have two. If that means nothing to you, it's okay. I don't teach human design, but I love human design. And so these were things I already knew about myself, but the mind blowing discoveries that I had in this session with her around 
absolutely owning who I am in my natural state of being. So a good example of this is as a 6'2 manifester, I need a lot of rest. I do not have a motor. I get burned out really quick. I nap more than the average human. People think I'm crazy for like the fact that I have to nap every day or I just have to go lay down. Um, and the frequencies of like dissociation that I can get into and escapism because I get really overwhelmed or I'll burn myself out because I don't recognize that I don't have a motor or I believe that society needs me to operate my business in a certain way. Or when I used to work, you know, bartending or at other jobs, I would have to operate within societal norms, which would absolutely burn me to a crisp. And I would literally go home and like die in my bed. Uh, a good example of this is when I used to work at a bar or at Lululemon. Um, after when I worked at Lululemon, I would get in the car, my husband would pick me up and I would get in the car and he would try to talk to me. And I'd literally look at him and I'd say, you can't speak to me for the next hour. The next hour, I cannot hear anything out of your mouth. Now that sounds super intense, that's my energy, but I literally couldn't function from the overwhelm and burnout of having to work eight hours at a job at a, like for someone else, not doing my passion. It was absolutely crippling. Another example of this is when I was younger and I was in high school, I would wake up every single morning and I had my solitary routine. Okay. I would wake up two hours before school and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I always washed my hair because I have super thin hair. Uh, I always did my makeup. I always made myself, you know, something to eat and I would just take time to kind of wind up, rev up for the day. Okay. And I needed that time alone. And if anybody spoke to me in the morning, I would absolutely rage out because I didn't have the energetic input or allowance to have anyone in my field. So going into this energy and seeing the permission I was given by understanding my energetic frequency, I was like, yeah, A, this confirms all of my astrology. B, this confirms I get to live in alignment with who I am. Now there's going to be people be people out there that look at a manifestor, a six, two manifestor, and they're going to say, um, you know, you can't operate like that. Like society doesn't operate like that. You can't just go to sleep. You can't just have naps. You can't just, um, not work full days. And what I what was discovering with full permission from Renata is like, I actually need to take many breaks, which I do throughout the day. I take thousands of breaks. It's crazy. Um, and that's just part of my signature and learning that I need to export the needs and the needs of my business that are in alignment with my energy. So, you know, the things moving forward, I'm going to be hiring a VA. I'm going to be hiring someone to create graphics for me. I'm going to be hiring someone to edit all my videos and put everything on, you know, their shoulders as that is their energy. And I'm just meant to create, I'm this idea machine that, you know, I also need to be discerning about my ideas, but this is like something that has been coming through for me so long that when we were in the session, all this clarity happened. Okay. So knowing that I was going to go through this new beginnings, endings, transit, I booked this session, knowing that I need help right now. I need assistance in restructuring who I am and restructuring my business to be in greater alignment with my frequency. And if I don't do that, I'm going to literally stay stuck where I've been. I pulled a card and I said this, you know, in the ritual the other night for the Scorpio full moon, if you're listening to this, I mean, I guess I'm going to post this next week. So in the ritual last week, um, and I mentioned the card, the hangman that I pulled the other day and the statement that came out and through was the statement around what got you here won't get you there. I'm going to let you sit with that. What got you here? It's not going to get you there. So what got me here is not going to be what takes me to my next level. Am I super grateful for everything I have? Absolutely. Do I want more? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Right. So I am going to use that energy to know that I need to shift something, right? My business has to change. It has to grow. It has to expand in order for me to expand my reach, my wealth, my ability to support my students to do better programs, bigger programs, deeper programs. And if you guys are in any of my programs with me, whether it's a masterclass or 
a full on deep dive into its karmic or a, an a, a apprenticeship or mentorship with me, you know, like we go deep. My programs are life-changing. And so I need to have the space to create more of that life-changing work for you guys, for my students, for my listeners, right? It's more time for me to record podcasts like this because now I don't have to edit them. So what was really, really coming through as I tapped into this was Instagram. I had to let go of Instagram. This is the shedding process that has been huge around this energetic portal. Okay. Lesson two (laughs) is like, listen to your energy. I have known for three years that Instagram wasn't working for me anymore. Am I super grateful for, for Instagram and what it's brought to me? hundred percent. Am I so happy that I was able to build a business to the point where for the last two weeks, I have not had any inspiration and that was okay. And I know I'm safe and secure and I could take that time off. Absolutely. I thank Instagram for that so deeply. But one thing I've noticed noticed about Instagram is it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for my energetic signature. It makes me feel shitty. It makes me feel angry. Honestly, being on there is frustrating. It's overwhelming. I feel the energy of everyone. And it's like this soul sucking energy that is just, it feels like it's siphoning my energy out of me. And I felt that, like I said, for three years, but I have been in this scarcity mindset of if I don't stay on Instagram, I'm not going to be able to operate my business. I'm not going to make any money. The amount of times I've said that to my husband where I'm like, I wish I could delete Instagram, but I won't be able to do my business without it, which is such a load of shit. It's a load of bullshit. It's a load of excuses. And what came through in this session was like, I get to do whatever I want. I get to receive whatever I want. And I don't say that in an egoic way. I mean, when I align my frequency, I will be fine. Now, outside of the sphere of this this business alignment session, lately what's been coming through a lot in the shedding, this purging, releasing, and shifting is the energetic message that I have been in my own way for years. Okay, you're probably sitting there like, me too, me too. I have been the only thing holding me back from receiving because my scarcity, my fears, and my misalignment of self have been holding me back from receiving. I have been operating in a way that my brain or my subconscious mind thinks I can only receive from certain things. I can only receive from winning the lottery right? Like I can only get my dream home if I win the lottery. That's a, that's a load of bullshit. Like I mentioned this in an email last week to you, my beautiful listeners. If you're not already on my, my, my mailing list, that's the word I'm looking for. Make sure you go and subscribe. I'll drop the link below uh, because I send out really deep emails about the energies and about, you know, what's going on and all the good stuff. So Within that, I mentioned the idea that we all get stuck on, which is like, I can only get my dream home if I win the lottery. I can only live the life of my dreams if I win the lottery. So you're telling me that there is only one way in the entire universe, this spectral, beautiful quantum universe that you can get what you want in life. That's bullshit. I'm calling me and you out on that because there is millions of ways you can get there. Some of them don't align with you. Some of them are bullshit. Could you do them a hundred percent? But to say that there is only one way and it's the lottery, it's going to get you to what you want. No, no. We need to examine our values. We need to examine what we truly want and then figure out what we actually want to do with our time and our energy. What is your gift to the world? What is your service to the world? And like, how can you monetize that? How can you create a business out of that? Um, How can you create a life out of that? Even if you don't want to create a business, maybe you just want to be a stay at home mom. I don't know. How can you align your energy to make that a reality? These are the questions. Now I don't have the answers right now. 
But what has been coming through is it is entirely possible and we are the ones in our way. Everything is energy. Everything is cause and effect as above, so below. So we are being taught and shown what is not energetically in alignment. That's the shitty stuff. That's the stuff that doesn't feel good. And then we're being shown what does. That's the stuff that's juicy, expansive, the stuff that's easeful and playful. And in all of this, I have been learning over and over through different avenues, right? Like it's like several different funnels from different places, going to the same place, showing me that I get to receive everything I so desire when my energy is aligned to my truth, when I am in alignment with my values, when I am not leaking energy. Okay. This is huge. So there is something in you a dream, the version of you, the desires that are true to you, the values that are true to you. And I can almost guarantee you are doing something that is out of alignment with that. Now, A, we're human. That's totally okay. But if you don't witness it and see it and begin to change it bit by bit, you will stay exactly where you are right now. What got you here will not, will not get you there, right? You will stay the same version of yourself. You will stay in the same everything because you have to start aligning to your truth and living in your truth. So I'm going to give you guys a good example of that, which is like my value system. Okay. My value system is reading. Uh, when I go through my thank you universe board on Pinterest, I have saved so many of these beautiful images of like a woman reading, looking at mountains, a woman reading in the bathtub, a woman reading on a bathtub outside, a woman reading on the beach. And my husband and I were going through it the other day and I was like, damn, I've saved a lot of photos of reading. And what do I pick at the end of the day when I'm tired? You guessed it. TV, movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good movie. Love a juicy movie. I love a comedy. I love a sitcom. Love it. But my values are actually reading and I receive so much from reading. I don't receive anything from watching movies. Literally, I don't receive anything, maybe a little bit of escapism, which can sometimes calm me down. Reading, I receive so much expansion and so much clarity and knowledge. And I feel like I'm growing when I read. So when I am choosing TV or movies or whatever over reading, I am not congruent with my values. That's huge. That is going to lead me, not even going to lead me anywhere. It's going to keep me right here in the same spot, doing the same treadmill, acting the same, same in my business. If I continue to operate in the exact same way that I have been for the last three years, I'll stay right here, right? Here's okay. It's not bad. I mean, like I make enough to cover my bills. I make enough to feel okay. Is it where I want to stay? No. Is it getting me to that place where I can, you know, go on these big travel adventures I want to take? No. Uh, is it getting me to the place where I can buy my house soon? No. So my values are to buy my house, to travel, to do blah, blah, blah. If my business stays the same, I will not get there. So something has to change. And now we look at what needs to change. So I encourage you to really look into your life right now and tap into what needs to change bit by bit? Like, again, I mentioned in, I think it was the video on discipline. I can't even remember what it was called right now, but I'll link it in the show notes below. But like knowing that we, we can only change bit by bit, right? A little bit by little bit, or you will absolutely overwhelm your nervous system and go crazy. Bit by bit, changing your routines, your habits, your business habits. If you are, you know, kind of in the place I'm in, or whatever it is, it's like bit by bit, something has to change. Small changes every day. New, a new routine, a new morning routine every single day, right? My morning routine keeps getting built on over and over. Like, right, it started with yoga. Then I added my journal practice into it. Then I had to add breath work into it. So now the breath work is my meditation, is my, I sit in that space. Then I journal, then I do my yoga. Now, you know, I've got some injuries through my shoulders. Most of you guys know that at this point, if you don't, yeah, I'm working through some injuries from a car accident in my shoulders. And now I have to add in strengthening to my back body um, to open my shoulders. So I'm going to build that into my routine, right? Step by step by step. 
And all of these things are going to lead to six months from now, my life not looking the way it looks now. But if you change nothing, nothing will change. Like it seems so obvious to say, but it's not. It seems so easy to say, like, if you don't change anything, nothing will change. Like nothing changes if nothing changes. But the actual application of those words means your life in six months is a completely different life. That's huge. That's huge, right? Like these are the big things. So with Instagram, going back to that, I, I, I digress. <laughs> Tangents. Um, with Instagram, it was feeling unaligned. It was a hell no in my body with my specific makeup and frequency. And guys, I encourage you to go have a business alignment session with Renata. I'll link her in the show notes as well. With my specific frequency, if something is a hell no in my body, and I really feel like this is for everyone, um, it's got to go. So I ignored this for three years, three years, three years. Okay. Now we come to the Scorpio lunar eclipse on my Pluto, endings on endings on endings in my second house, how I make money, how I feel secure, how I'm safe, all those things, endings on endings on endings. Instagram's got to go. And this was not a hard decision for me. I had uh, just synchronistically, synchronistically <laughs> taken time off of Instagram for Mercury retrograde. And I felt so good. And then going into the session, prompting this Instagram conversation, it was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm absolutely done with this platform because it doesn't feel good anymore. TikTok feels really fun to me. It's really enjoyable. I love being on video and talking to you guys. I love sharing my message. I love all of that stuff. Pinterest is super fun to me because it's just easy. There's no politics. There's no, there's nothing on there, but beauty. And I love that. Um, as a Libra rising, I'm like, hell yes. Give me the beautiful world. Give me the scenery, give me outfits and beautiful places inspire me. Right. So Pinterest feels really good to me too. And then YouTube, like I love being on here with you guys. I love all of this. I'm going to start going live because it's super fun. I want to grow this channel. I want to expand with you guys, but Instagram didn't feel like that. It just wasn't feeding my soul. And so I had to say, I'm done. That is the lunar eclipse energy. It's an ending, right? So within this portal, there's so many lessons when we're listening. And I think that's the only reason I've been mentally sound going through a Plutonian hit with the moon in this energetic sphere. What I'll say is, you know, 10 years ago when I wasn't using astrology to live my life, I probably would have been in chaos right now. Um, I naturally have a chaotic frequency. It's just part of me. If you've been following me for a while now, you guys know my signatures, but I lived in rage and chaos and, you know, regulating my nervous system, which is something I've been doing through this big portal of the eclipses, making sure my body's good. My brain's good. My, my, my energy's good and living with intention and knowing my transits has literally changed my life. It changed the way I function. It changed the way I look at everything. Now I see it all as a blessing right? I see this ending as a blessing. It's terrifying to leave Instagram, which has provided me financially for three, four, five years is terrifying. But if I don't do it, nothing will change. And that's huge. Do you guys see how potent these little moments of fear can be and moving through our fear instead of continuing to be chased by it or continuing to operate in frequencies that aren't aligned with your soul. There's so much here. There's so much here. So the next lesson, I don't even know what lesson we're on guys. I'm just ranting at this point. The next lesson is really about taking care of your body through potent transits. Now, when you know you're going through a massive transit in your chart, whether it's an eclipse season, that's for all of us, a Mercury retrograde, that's for all of us, more so if you're getting impacted, but either way in general, or you're going through like an outer planet transit in your life, you are going to benefit from taking care of your nervous system. I'm, you're going to go watch if you haven't already my video on like seven ways to take care of yourself in a crazy ass world, because that is going to shift 
everything. Okay. That's going to shift how you operate, how you receive, and it's going to make you come to peace, come to homeostasis, come to being balanced through the chaos. And as we know, things are getting more and more chaotic. Like, I think we're just in this like deep chaotic frequency. And so the more we can take care of our bodies, the more you can take care of your nervous system, the better you're going to feel. And the more capable you're going to feel moving through very intense transits like this. It also means, you know, if you're anything like me, you're probably going to want to create a life in which you can take a step back at very energetic, intense portals. Um, if you're like me, you're going to have to go to bed. I literally had to nap every single day for the last two weeks for about two to three hours. That's obscene. I understand that. It's my signature and it was so needed. So there might be something in your signature where you're like, yeah, I freaking need that as well. I'm burnt to cr- burnt out. I'm just burnt out. And you might have to cultivate a life where you can do that. That's okay to own, right? It doesn't have to, ha- have to happen overnight. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but this is you living in alignment. So you, you step into whatever that role is, start working with a business mentor, you start working with whomever is going to help you get to your next level. Once again, I'll reiterate, even within your nervous system and your body, what got you here won't get you there. If you want to feel calm, peace, love, ease. What got you here? If you're feeling out of whack, out of alignment, what got you here won't take you there. Like that's, that's the statement of the day. (laughs) So knowing that these moments we have just been through very intense start to the year. And I, I wish I could tell you it's going to get any easier these moments are powerful. They are big shifts. This year, 2023 comes with endless changes, endless opportunities for growth. Like as we move into the summer, we're going to be moving into the nodal transits, shifting into Aries and Libra. We're going to be moving into a Venus retrograde. There's going to be a lot of shit to unpack there. If you haven't already signed up for the masterclass, for the nodal axis, collective karma masterclass journey back to yourself. I highly suggest you join me inside there because I'm going to help you understand the themes. I'm going to help you understand the themes that we are moving through for the next two years. And it's going to be all about coming home to yourself, all about reinventing yourself, restoking the warrior within finding your power and releasing all the areas of disharmony releasing all the areas where you have been out of the state of peace, out of a state of um, like balance. Okay. And I know we've all felt that. So coming into this, it's like, we have to come home to the self and you're going to find over the next two years, whether you join me in this masterclass or not, the theme of self is going to be huge. It already has been this year. If you're already feeling that warrior energy, that stoking, that fire, it's there, but I'm going to help you go deeper. I'm going to help you figure out exactly the activation points. What are you looking at? How is this going to impact you? All that juicy goodness. So make sure you join me in that because it's going to be delicious. It's going to be fun. And like I said earlier, my programs will change your life. They will. That's just part of what we do here. And I'm honored to be able to do that with you. But regardless, you are going to be experiencing more shifts, more changes, more growth opportunities this year, especially if you have transits being activated through the portals we're moving through. So knowing that you're going to be okay and you're, you have free will, okay, you have free will. And it really helps to know the energetic themes that you are moving through. It's very potent. It's very, very potent. And within this beautiful world, the final lesson I'll leave you with is when you start to live in alignment with your personal frequency, nobody else's, leave the programming, leave the belief systems that you should be any way other than the way you are. When you start to live in alignment with your personal frequency, everything will change. 
everything will change because you begin to trust you. You begin to trust that your inside say, I don't like living this way. It doesn't feel good for me. Please align to your natural state. And then your natural state will go, yes, that feels good. More, please, more, please. And the universe will go, okay, more, here it is. Here's more, here's more. Um, One of my dear soul sisters, Ashley Irwin, she was on the podcast recently about um, the dark feminine, the goddess energy and plant medicine. She is amazing. She keeps saying to me, so we're running a retreat together. If you guys don't already know that, I think we're more than half full at this point. And she keeps stating to me, like, it gets to be this easy. It gets to be this easy because we're in our natural state of alignment. The people who are going to come to that retreat are being magnetized to us to go through that experience with us, that portal with us. It gets to be this easy because we are allowing our energy, our frequency to operate as it should. And that is fucking magic. It's fucking magic. That's what I'm going to leave you on today. (sighs) Guys, it's been a moment. It's been a moment. I'm hoping there's a little bit more of a calm as we move out of this eclipse. You know, as I said, I'm recording this with the eclipse is happening in like an hour now. Um, I hope some calm comes for us knowing that we are going to have some shifts moving into summer. I hope you're able to find some peace right now, some clarity as we move out of Mercury retrograde. Uh, When I post this, we should be just kind of wrapping things up, moving into the shadow period. I hope you take time to reflect. I hope you take time to journal, to experience a deeper processing of everything you've learned. Maybe write down the lessons that have come up for you over the next, the last five weeks, examine them, explore them and sit with them and then apply them. The biggest thing I'll leave you with as a Virgo stellium, Capricorn stellium, apply them. Okay. Apply those lessons. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say all about this little episode that just kind of was a fly by the seat of my pants episode. Uh, Make sure if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. If you have anything to say, drop it in the comments. I friggin' love seeing what you guys have to say about what's coming through or the energetic shifts. Let me know in the comments, what are you feeling? Make sure to give this a like, and I hope you have the best day ever. I can't wait to connect with you again.